All right, welcome to this little video. I'm going to demonstrate today how to analyze porosity using Dragonfly. So I'm going to try and cover quite a lot in a short time. So the idea is that you can stop and replay the video when you do it yourself in Dragonfly. So what we have here is micro CT data of a cube of metal with pores inside. And we want to figure out what the volume fraction of porosity is and then make some analysis of the pore size distribution and so on. Maybe a nice 3D color coded um, image showing where the largest pores are. And so, so in this image data, um, what we need in Dragonfly is a segmentation. So we need to segment what is exactly material and what is exactly porosity in order to calculate anything from it. So what we do is we're going to go to the segment tab and use Otsu. We're going to use an upper Otsu thresholding method, which defines all the higher density pixels as, as that. And we're going to add that to a new region of interest. So you need to remember to untick the preview. Now we have this bluish color region of interest. As you see, it's not including the pore spaces. In order to make this a, a reference cube, um, volume in order to calculate the volume for it, we need to fill in those um, pore spaces. One way is to use opening or a closing function, I mean, to close those pores. So if you keep your eye on the small pore spaces, um, you see that many of them are closed like that. There's also another tool called Full Inner Areas 3D, which you can apply, which is closing all these pore spaces, um, all um, pores not connected to surface. So this is now a reference cube data. Now we need to do the opposite. We need to also select what is exactly the pores. So we're going to use lower Otsu in this case, which is similar to what we just used. In this case, it's the, the lower gray values. Uh, if you want to change that, you can also drag these uh, thresholding sliders or select values manually. Um, uh, at the moment, it's going up to 29,300. Let's select that. This, the not, nice thing about Otsu is it's an automated method. So if somebody else does the same analysis, they will get exactly the same answer on if it's the exact same data. So this is now going to be called all pores, this region of interest. And of course, we don't want the exterior area. So we're going to refine region of interest, process islands, and remove by largest. So we're going to remove the largest connected um, part of that region of interest. And now we are left with all pores according to the Otsu threshold. I forgot to do something in the reference cube. There are some loose bits outside the cube, which I don't want included. You don't see them so easily because of its color. Let's make it a different blue color for the material. There you see it over there. So what we can do to remove that is refine region of interest, process islands, and keep by, keep by largest. So we're going to keep the largest one section, which is the cube. And now we have the reference cube without its small bits outside. So now what we can do now, when you've clicked on the cube in 2D, you can calculate um, compared to all pores segmentation, what is the percentage? So this is a volumetric percentage across the whole cube. It's not only in this 2D image, it's 2.6% of the volume is porosity according to this thresholded method here. So um, when we want to make more detailed analysis of each pore space, what we need to do for that is we need to make a, um, separate these components, these pores all from each other using a multi ROI and then make a choose which analysis to perform on it. In order to um, do this properly, we don't want to calculate statistics on pores which have less than a certain number of voxels. So um, there's the best practice depend is um, two by two by two voxels uh, as a minimum to positively identify a pore in CT data. And I'm not going to go into details of that here. It depends on the scan quality and on the voxel size. There will always be some smaller pores, like as you also see in this image, that are not selected. In fact, in this analysis, I'm going to throw away many small pores. Um, the way to do it and select the number of um, voxels per pore is, again, 
refine region of interest, process islands, and then move by voxel count. So if we want to throw away all pores less than two by two by two, we select here nine as the minimum voxel count. And the same for, for three by three by three would be 27. So in this case, um, I'm going to select 100 just to select only the biggest pores and to make the analysis in a reasonable time. We um, don't want to sit watching the computer make an analysis for five minutes in this video. Um, we'd like to do it uh, a bit faster and get the entire video within about 10 minutes or so. So I'm removing small pores from this region of interest at the moment. Uh, as you see, only the biggest ones are there. I, I should have made a copy of the of the previous one. So what I can do is I can undo. There's one, one step to undo and make a copy. And in this copied version, we can now repeat that step and make a refine process islands removed by voxel count 100. So with this <clears throat> newly selected region of interest with less um, pores selected for analysis, what we need to do is we need to create a multi ROI, um, which basically is, is um, telling um, the algorithms to calculate each pore space as a separate entity. So what we do is we right click, we go to connected components and create a new multi ROI. So this multi ROI, as you see there, has a color assigned differently to each pore space that we've selected. And this is basically already putting everything into a spreadsheet without any analysis. So actually, you could use this for creating a visualization without spending any time on analyzing volumes or sphericity and so on. I will demonstrate that in a minute, but just to show you in 3D um, what this looks like with the quad view over there. So by the way, visualizing in uh, volumetric data is possible and it um, can be tweaked quite nicely. You can select different presets. What I want to demonstrate here is a, a simple myth, a simpler visualization. If we just put the volume data, the image channel off and what we, we've already got a reference cube. So what I want to do is I want to take this reference cube and create a mesh of its surf, of the surface of it. So if we create a, a sampled mesh, let's make it three by three by three. This is down sampling. So we don't spend a lot of time on this mesh. It's only for creating what we, what we're going to do here is we're going to create a transparent mesh just to create a shadow for the 3d render. So if we take this mesh and reduce its opacity, we have a nice uh, transparent cube into which we can put our pore spaces. So I've just clicked on the 3D uh, button on the right, and now we can see all pore spaces that have been selected according to the selection, more than 100 voxels. You can already see something here that on this view, more pores are towards the left-hand side which is quite interesting. So let's analyze this now statistically because this color coding doesn't mean anything yet. The way to analyze that is to right click and do a um, scalar generator. So we go to basic measurements. What we want to calculate is volume and um, maximum ferret diameter is the same as a caliper diameter or the longest axis of a pore and sphericity. Let's do those three and this calculation might take one minute or so. Um, so for each of the pore spaces, those values are now being calculated and being assigned into a spreadsheet. The spreadsheet data, which you see over here can be saved and to CSV file. So I want to demonstrate it after. I'll just show you here this little button on the bottom right saves that spreadsheet data to a CSV file for processing yourself. And this little button gives you the um, ability to make histogram or statistical analysis of the analyzed um, components in, within Dragonfly. You can also then make images of your histogram or save the histogram itself to a CSV file.
which is different than saving all the data of each pore space um, with columns uh, into a CSV file. So once this is done, I will um, demonstrate how to um, contrast and color, change the colors of this um, porosity analysis. And um, we will see, you can see this, you can make images of this and videos of this in 2D and 3D, which I won't show all of that now. Uh, the aim here is just to give you the tools to be able to make your own porosity analysis. And I recommend uh, using small data or simple data with few pores as a first step. So we're almost done here. So um, what we've got as analyzed measurements, we will have di uh, volume, diameter, and sphericity. So we will change between, I will demonstrate all three of those. Right, so the calculation is complete. What you need to do is close this calculator and it's still not view, visualizing any of those because it's not doesn't know which one to visualize. So let's select volume here. And now this is selecting by volume. So the largest volume is this yellow one here, which you can see it's a kind of a elongated pore, connected pore in the vertical direction, which is interesting. Um, what you can do if you want to change the color coding is right, uh, just left click on that. Um, button there and move down. I use the temperature a lot. So this is auto contrasting on the data where the smallest ones are blue and the largest one is red. So what we can also do is we can select the maximum ferry diameter, which is in this case 3.6 millimeters. So this is also this long, the high volume pore is also the one which is the longest in this data. If we want to visualize, change this contrast to zero to 0 0.4, for example, and zoom in on the smaller ones. We can do that by right-clicking and going to Measurement Inspector. So Measurement Inspector then allows you to change the measurement range from, for example, 0 to 0 0.5. And uh, what you can do at the moment, the, large, the ones outside of the range of 0 0.5 is hidden from the view. So you'll see the large pore is not there anymore. So we'll click it to not hide it and then it's still visible, but it's now red, so overscale basically. So that's quite nice. Um, what we can do further is we can change that color contrast further. It seems, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of green in there, but we can also change the, the, um, or the steps for the, you can change the color contrasting as you prefer. And then what I wanted to demonstrate here is if we go back to the properties tab, sphericity. So here, obviously the long one is not so spherical and all the others are quite, have a high sphericity value of close to one. So you will see maybe some one or two pores having a value more than one. This is due to um, the surface and voxel and volumes being calculated by voxel counting. It's also possible to do a sub-voxel um, surface for each pore, which just takes longer to do. So um, just for interest. So basically I've demonstrated how to do this. I've not demonstrated yet. I've just said about this histogram. So we can spread, you can do a histographic analysis of the pore diameters and log it, you can change the bin count and you can analyze that in detail. We can also zoom into certain regions here. And I think that's basically as much as I need to go into details here, just maybe to demonstrate how to save that to a file and you can just export all slots, not just the diameter, also the volume and so on. So that's how you get your uh, uh, statistical porosity analysis. Let me just demonstrate this one for volume also. So there's the large pore on the right. And I hope you find this video useful. And until next time, that's it.